We are here today with Commissioner Wally Overman, Vice Chairman of the Dare County Board of Commissioners, to discuss a critical situation at Oregon Inlet. Commissioner Overman, what's happening at the inlet? Dorothy, we have at, at this point in time, uh, starting from October of 2014 through uh, uh, January 20th or so of, of uh, 2015, a, an issue of severe shoaling that is going on uh, in the inlet. Uh, that shoaling has progressively moved southward and as shown by this map, uh, it, it shows the severity of the, of the shoaling issue and how it has, uh, how it has uh, traveled southward uh, on these various surveys. This, this map was uh, made possible and done from information that we derived uh, from the surveys done by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And this shows the six-foot contour line, which means uh, everything behind this line that's in red was uh, either was six feet or less. Uh, that moved then to this point in November, and as you can see, it's beginning to encroach into the authorized navigation channel. And then from November 10th to December 22nd, we had a, a very rapid acceleration of the six-foot contour uh, southward uh, along the bridge. Uh, from December 22nd until January the 2nd, and there was also a subsequent one done on January 5th, uh, the shoaling moved even further to the south. And then in a period of roughly two weeks, uh, it moved an additional 50 feet, uh, which is a, a pretty sizable jump over that period of time. Uh, what, what, in addition to this, what we have, have is an area right in this, in this uh, area here, and also just east of the uh, authorized navigation span. That is actually four feet or less, which means that no boats of any size, be they charter boats or commercial boats, uh, can pass through those areas because they will, they will bottom out. Just to clarify the map a little, we have the Bonner Bridge um, here, and then up north would be Nags Head. That's correct. Hatteras Island down here. So this is the area in, on the ocean side of the Bonner Bridge. And you, these incredibly shallow waters, four to six feet less in some areas. How are the recreational and charter boats getting through? Right now what they are literally forced to do is to come bypass the authorized uh, navigation span and come south along the bridge until they reach an area down here that they refer to as the block. And uh, what we are, or what they're having to do then, is to swing out and get as perpendicular as they can to the span, and come through the span. Uh, one of the problems that they have doing this is, is that now we have a very strong north to south current that runs along the bridge and makes that uh, navigation through those tight areas very, very difficult. Uh, those boats range. Uh, uh, for 18 to 20 feet uh, wide, and they are going through a 50 foot wide span. So you don't have a whole lot of room on either side, and uh, uh, last thing we need is damaged boats and, and damaged pilings on that bridge, as you well know. Um, but that is how the fellows are having to, uh, to, to navigate uh, that area, to avoid, to avoid this spot. They're generally using uh, spans now 10 through uh, 13, and uh, 10 is getting kind of shaky as a result of this last right. movement here that we talked about a while ago. Uh, so now it's mostly 11, 12, and 13. Uh, so they only have three that they can work through now. The problem is, is when you get past the, the 13th, bent, uh, 13th span south of the authorized span, uh, because of the height limitations, you know, the bridge is very high in this area, comes down to very low here. So once you get past 13, uh, or the 13th span south, uh, we run into height limitations where the commercial guys, which are green sticks, uh, and, and the superstructures on the, on the uh, uh, charter boats uh, would hit the bridge if they try to go any further south. So we have a very limited area here that the guys can get through. What actions has the Board of Commissioners taken? Uh, we have at this point um, approached uh, with the Oregon Inlet uh, Task Force uh, the uh, 
Tourism Board and made a request uh, for uh, some funds. We requested $300,000 uh, for uh, a, a critical dredge project to open this up so that our watermen can, can reach, uh, reach the ocean to do their work. Um, the Tourism Board uh, granted that request and uh, was approved by the Board of Commissioners uh, in a, a subsequent meeting and those funds will be matched by state funds uh, to give us a total of six hundred thousand uh, dollars for a, a critical dredge project to hopefully open this up uh, to to where the guys can can reach good water uh, uh, safely but isn't Oregon Inlet a federally designated channel it is Dorothy uh, the Rivers and Harbors Act of 1950 uh, designated uh, Oregon Inlet as a, a federally uh, authorized uh, inlet or channel and uh, are responsible for that channel. The, the problem is is that the federal government does not or has not allocated enough money toward Oregon Inlet to keep it open to the uh, federal specifications which is uh, 400 feet wide and 14 feet plus 2 feet in depth. Uh, the, Fed, the President's budget um, only allocated $800,000 to Oregon Inlet and that is barely enough funds uh, for the Corps of Engineers to do the surveys that generate this kind of information here. Those are, those are done uh, for the most part on a weekly basis as uh, weather permits. So, and that's again how we generated uh, these, these, this map. But um, uh, there's just not enough money there to, to take care of the dredging requirements uh, that now exist at Oregon Inlet. Let's talk about the economic impact of the inlet and why it is so important. Dorothy, the economic impact of Oregon Inlet uh, is $548 million uh, statewide. Uh, those are numbers that were generated by in a Moffitt and Nickel study in 2013 that was completed in May of 2014. The total effect in state and local taxes statewide is $23.2 million per year based upon that same study. This also represents a total effect of over 4,300 jobs statewide. The, the, the impact of that whole deal is, if you want to look at it another way, is that North Carolina uh, and Dare County cannot afford to have Oregon Inlet closed for strictly economic reasons. There's entirely too much going on there uh, for us to allow Oregon Inlet to remain in this, in this state. Um, it is a vital economic engine for Dare County uh, and it represents a critical transportation corridor for all of our watermen, be it recreational, be it uh, commercial, uh, or charter, mm -hmm. to get to the ocean where they all work for a living. It's their highway to work. It's their highway to work. What other issues are we facing at the inlet? Dorothy, what we have going on now is that with the rapid movement of this shoaling to the south here, um, it is, is bad enough. What we also have, though, is on this side of the bridge, on the west side of the bridge, there is an existing shoal there that has been there for a long time, and it is starting to move uh, in in this direction. And if these two sh if these two shoaling areas were to weld together, uh, then we would have an absolutely critical situation uh, at the inlet, uh, which would mean that all of this area would be closed off and there would in essence be, uh, be no way for boaters to uh, get through the inlet. What if that were to happen? Dorothy, that would be basically an unthinkable situation. Uh, it would cause major socioeconomic, uh, environmental, and ecological issues uh, with regard to, to our entire area. In addition to that, uh, you would have uh, problems with, uh, you would have resource problems. We have uh, a lot of fish that traverse this inlet to get to fresh water uh, to, to spawn. 
And uh, should this close off to a point that it became uh, totally impassable, then we would have really severe issues uh, along those lines. In addition, um, Oregon Inlet is a safe harbor uh, for boats, uh, and you have to go 100 miles in each direction, uh, north or south, to reach a safe harbor if Oregon Inlet uh, becomes impassable. Uh, that would present uh, safety issues uh, that, would, that would be untenable. Commissioner Overman, you and the other commissioners have a long and enduring commitment to Oregon Inlet. In addition to reaching out to the Tourism Board for the critical dredging funds, what else is being done? Uh, Dorothy, the, uh, the Board of Commissioners, as well as the Oregon Inlet and Waterways and the Oregon Inlet Task Force, are uh, contacting uh, everybody involved uh, with Oregon Inlet uh, on the state and federal level uh, with our, our legislators to look at a, uh, a project uh, whereby we attack the issue with shoaling in Oregon Inlet on a proactive basis. Uh, what this would mean if we can uh, attain the funding to do it, and it's about a $7.2 million per year uh, project, um, would be that we would bring a hopper dredge uh, into, that would be stationed in uh, one cheese, and this hopper dredge would be, in essence, uh, dedicated to Oregon Inlet and would dredge in Oregon Inlet about 340 days per year. We think uh, that that would move, I think the number is about 1.2 million cubic yards of sand, which is a, a huge number, obviously, but would get us toward the uh, uh, federally designated uh, width and depth of so 400 feet wide again and, and 14 feet plus 2 feet uh, dredge depth. Uh, we're not sure that it would get us totally to that, but it would certainly be a large step in that direction. If that's successful, then what? Ultimately, the, the target is to get to a fully stabilized inlet. Uh, that would require the use, uh, at least as technology exists today, by the use of uh, jetties, or, or a sand bypass system or a combination of both. Uh, again, that would be uh, technology driven into what is the best means of, of accomplishing that. But in, in the long term, uh, that, is, that is what would be considered. The governor, through the uh, Department of Administration, uh, instituted the uh, Oregon Inlet Land Acquisition Task Force, which is looking at ways to uh, get the land on either side of the inlet uh, in as state property, which would allow us then to uh, have the, the land necessary to build uh, jetties or to in, uh, put in the uh, sand bypass system or a combination thereof. Uh, this in the long term uh, should stabilize uh, Oregon Inlet. Who are the critical partners working with the Board of Commissioners? Dorothy, we can't say enough about the uh, uh, Tourism Board uh, in uh, giving us the $300,000 to match up with the state funds, again, to give us a total of $600,000 for this critical dredge project that, that we will do uh, as soon as the timing is right uh, to, to do that project. Uh, that is uh, kind of gets the ball rolling on, uh, on the, the current situation uh, that we have there. In addition to that, uh, we have to say a, a, a big thank you to the Corps of Engineers as well as the Coast Guard. Um, as you know, the Coast Guard now has designated Oregon Inlet as a regulated navigation area, and with that, uh, they have the power to uh, place certain restrictions upon the comings and goings uh, through that inlet. Uh, primarily, uh, one of the things they can do is uh, uh, designate that boats of uh, a certain draft uh, or up to a certain draft uh, can go through the inlet and those that exceed uh, that draft cannot. Uh, to date, they have not uh, put any restrictions on, on travel through the inlet and their cooperation and understanding is, uh, is greatly appreciated uh, by everyone. Um, lastly, we need to thank our watermen who have been uh, extremely patient uh, and, again, understanding uh, with us as we 
uh, work through the shoaling issues that we're faced with here. Uh, they, they are on board with us and, uh, and hopefully will stay on board with us uh, until such time as we can get this inlet uh, in the shape that it needs to, to be in. Uh, again, as I stated earlier, uh, Oregon Inlet is a critical navigation corridor and we must look at it in that fashion for uh, socioeconomic reasons. Many thanks to you for taking this time to provide an update so that everyone is aware of the conditions and gets an idea of the importance it has for all of us who live here or visit here and certainly those who use it on a daily basis. We thank you for being able to talk about this critical navigation corridor.